Yeah, I did three tours of Afghanistan and I, and I was there. I've been there a lot this year living with the Afghan people, uh, actually, um, to find out what the result of the last 20 years of conflict has been. Obviously, that conclusion happened this morning when the Taliban entered Kabul. Um, even the CIA or, you know, international intelligence services did not think that the country would fall this quickly. Um, when I was there um, recently, I, I didn't think it would fall this quickly. Um, it is um, obviously heartbreaking because so many people gave their lives um, and have been injured. And we've invested trillions uh, internationally into this country. And for it to just fall within a matter of weeks is, is, is simply unbelievable. Um, but for me, I think that the biggest headline out of all of this is despite all our efforts, it really marks a line in the sand. It's the end of the global war on treasure. Uh, and I think people are going to look on this as being a greater foreign policy disaster than Vietnam. I truly think the re we have no idea the severity of the repercussions of what has just happened. And it was totally avoidable. This is, a, a, this is an own goal. We, we, we could have kept a very small international force there to ensure that the um, Afghan military didn't collapse, but we've chosen not to. And the most heartbreaking thing is a humanitarian disaster that is now being unleashed across Afghanistan and onto its borders. And we bear responsibility for that. And we must do everything we can now to help Afghan people because they're ultimately the, are the ones that are suffering. When you spoke to um, uh, the Afghan people earlier in the year when you were there, did, did they have any sense of what might happen uh, with regards to the Taliban invading the rest of the country? Or did they, ha did they have uh, more faith, uh, like the rest of us did, in the, uh, in the Afghan army and in the, uh, in the security services to keep them safe? Well, I mean, uh, uh, first of all, that they were actually quite great. I was surprised how grateful they were that we did intervene because, you know, quality of life generally across the country, even in rural areas, was better than we, when we were there in 2001. And, you know, there is no consent. People don't want the Taliban, but they do want stability. Um, and one of the major problems is that no one really had any trust in this Afghan government, which has mm -hmm. been incre incredibly corrupt. That's one of the reasons the country's collapsed mm -hmm. so quickly. Um, more recently... There was real fear. Now, the, the, the atmosphere completely changed when Biden announced what he called the end of the forever war. And this ridiculous concept of bringing troops home before 9-11 as if it would be some sort of victory. Well, I mean, I don't think you could I don't think um, Biden could have a greater catastrophe on his hands saying he was going to control the, the rate of the withdrawal or make it before 9-11 and for the country to have actually fallen in August, a month. Before we, before we even got to yeah. the twentieth anniversary, so I mean that there were so many things to analyze here, but I don't think the Afghan people, um, pe military analysts, um, people that have spent a long time in the country, realized just how quickly this was going to happen. Uh, and over the last twenty four hours or so, President Biden authorizing for more American troops to go in to help uh, safely remove uh, members uh, of the American embassy and other officials that remain in the country. But it doesn't seem to have happened quickly enough. In fact, by the time the boots are on the ground to help that happen, as you say, uh, well ahead of that anniversary of nine eleven, um, it will be too late. Um, I just want to ask you before you go because it is so interesting to hear your experience, James. Um, during your tours of duty, you know, as an officer, uh, were you actually face to face with the Taliban? Did you come into contact with them? And, you know, obviously you'll have met Afghan people who will have had experiences uh, with them and been terribly afraid of them. But, you know, what was your experience of them? Yeah, I mean, I was in the Royal Marines on the front line, so it's a bit like asking if the Pope's Catholic. Um, yeah. We <laughs> I mean, we, we, fought, we fought them pretty much um, every day, you know, down in, uh, in Helmand and Kandahar. I've operated across the country. Um, yeah, I mean, look, we... The one thing I would say about this, people talk about the Taliban um, and we think of some sort of rural um, rural armed force. This is Pakistan. These people are backed by Pakistan. This is a, a, a rural, so this is an international situation which we've stepped into. And we were fighting against Pakistan ISI. They were the ones arming the Taliban. And the reason Afghanistan has fallen so quickly, if you look at how, how masterful this strategy has been, this isn't organized uh, by in, on some farm in Helmand or Kandahar. This has been strategized by the Pakistani ISI, the Pakistani military, and resourced by them. And now the Taliban, and now the Taliban has, has been established. They're in Kabul now, uh, and Pakistan now has a, a, a state which it controls by proxy.